What's up everyone, Nathan Larson here with another video for you home studio artists, those of you who are writing and recording your own music at home. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing five very simple songwriting tips to make your songs better. Now, before you jump into the video, if you are an independent artist looking to actually build a music career and you need help with writing better music and coming up with a business plan, make sure you check out Artist Mentor. I'm the co-founder and that is literally our entire purpose. We have links in the description down below. We also have some courses you can check out if you're interested in that. The very first thing I wanna mention is that these five tips, though they are very actionable, you can use them today, they will improve your songs. You just need to keep in mind that these are tools. Each of these individual tips is essentially one tool. So just because you know how to use a hammer does not mean that you're going to be able to build a very exquisite mansion. However, knowing how to use a hammer is definitely a skill that you're going to want to have or knowing how to use a drill or knowing how to use a saw, for example. So take each of these tips, add them into your tool belt to help you create better songs, which is our metaphorical mansion that we're talking about. Oh, subscribe to the channel if you like the video. And if you don't like the video, well, Tip number one is when it comes to melody writing, you should be favoring stepwise motion. Now, let me quickly explain what I mean by this. Stepwise motion is when you move up or down by only a half step or a whole step. And typically this is gonna be happening diatonically, which is just a really fancy way of saying in the key that you're in. So if we're in the key of C major, sounds like this. Stepwise motion would be if we start on C, it would be either moving up to a D or down to a B. That is all stepwise motion. So when it comes to melody writing, we can either one, use the same note in the melody, just add rhythm. Da, 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 da. We can also then go up or down by stepwise motion. And of course we can add rhythm to that as well. Da, 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 da something like that. And then the third option is we can use leaps. Leaps would be anything above a major second, which is just a whole step. So things like this, which would be a major third. That's from C to E, do, do, or this. That's all the way up to an octave. Now, of course you can do more than an octave. That's gonna be very difficult to sing though. You can do the same thing downwards. So each of those examples have their own interval from third all the way up or down to an octave. Now I'm doing this all within the key of C, which is what you're gonna wanna do if you're playing any sort of mainstream music, you're probably gonna wanna stay in the key that the song exists in. So the principle is that you should be favoring stepwise motion over leaps. Now before you start saying, well, wait a minute, are you saying I shouldn't use leaps? That's not what I'm saying at all. Leaps can be actually very powerful and you should absolutely be using leaps in your music. I can't think of really too much music that doesn't utilize leaps. What I'm saying is, is that if you wanna create music that people find very easy to listen to, to, you're gonna to wanna to gravitate towards using stepwise motion. I'm gonna demonstrate here for you with this new song that I've got, um, that I'm stewing up right now. Now, just to be clear, this is gonna be a female singer singing this, so it's a little low in my range, but here you go. I was once afraid of love And I was scared of losing trust So this melody, we're in A flat major, is just C, This is the stepwise motion. I was once afraid of love. So easy to remember, because I'm pretty sure after me singing that one time, you could probably regurgitate that to me. Now, if we had a melody like this and stuff, I was once afraid of love. I'm not saying that's bad. In fact, that melody could very likely work, but having something that's maybe a little more simple, a little more distilled, is actually going to be much easier for a listener to listen to, and also for that listener to then sing themselves. So if you're creating any sort of mainstream music, you're gonna wanna err towards using stepwise motion. So let me just go ahead and create a new melody from scratch. I'll just sing on do, 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 and uh, come up with a melody using majority stepwise motion. I'll just start on, C here, and I'll just use these chords here, C, F, G. Do, 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 do,
can see how simple it is to just use literally two notes. All I'm doing is using C and D. Now, of course, we could start adding a little bit more complexity, still using stepwise motion like this. Do, 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 Again, all of that is stepwise motion. C, D, E, 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 D, C, D. Do, 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 all stepwise. Now, what would happen if we start incorporating a nice combination of leaps to do something like, what if we start on C, but then we want to leap somewhere different and then use stepwise motion to kind of carry us through. So let's do this. It's a perfect fifth from C to G. So what I'm gonna demonstrate here is how a lot of times you wanna use leaps right away at the very beginning to kind of draw attention to us going somewhere different. So here's how I'll do this. Do, 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 do. It's almost the same melody because the shape of the melody is very similar, but I'm using that bigger leap to kind of take us somewhere different. So again, the concept here is that stepwise motion is certainly being used the most here, but is definitely not the only thing I'm using. So you should be using a good combination of leaps, but you should definitely be leaning towards using stepwise motion and passing tones. What's called passing tones would be because all those notes are kind of passing from one to the next passing tones. Use that at your next party. Tip number two. This might sound a little weird, but here it goes. Idea, idea, go somewhere different. Idea, idea, go somewhere different. Now, really what the concept here is to use a good blend of repetition and then a good blend of doing things differently. If you start repeating something like idea, 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 like four times, when I say idea, I mean like the same idea. Four times, even three times, it gets redundant. It gets to a point where you're like, okay, like I, I kind of get the idea. So I'm gonna demonstrate with the same song that we started with earlier. And uh, I'm gonna play a little bit more of it to demonstrate what this means. I was once afraid of love. That's the idea one. We're gonna do it again. I was scared of losing trust. That's idea two. Now what are we gonna do? We're gonna go somewhere different. I was afraid of stepping out, afraid to say out loud. We're gonna do it again. All that I felt inside my heart, afraid you won't understand. And then we're gonna go somewhere different. But you love me like nobody else can. And that goes in the chorus. So again, the idea is that you're going to use two of the same idea. Now, lyrically, it's different, but the melody is the same, the chord progression is the same, and then we're gonna use that to kind of propel us into something different. So you wanna do two of something, and that third time should probably be something different. You get the idea? This is a really simple one, but super, super effective. You want to repeat ideas so that people can retain that information, they can remember that information, but you wanna make sure that we're propelling the song forward. One of the biggest mistakes that I see songwriters making is really one of two things, either one, they're repeating ideas just way too often that we're not actually getting to anything different because things that are different, whether that be the chord progression as well as the melody or just the melody with the same chord progression, however you wanna cut it, doing different things actually pushes a song forward. And when the song is pushing forward, it keeps your listener thinking like, I wonder what happens next. I want to continue listening to this. If they get bored right away out of the bat, how are you gonna keep them listening to the entire song if in the back of their mind, they're kind of subconsciously thinking, is this just gonna be like the same thing over and over? The second mistake that I see a ton of artists making is doing too much, not having enough repetition, just going from one idea to the next idea, the next idea, the next idea. And I just had a coaching call earlier this week where it was similar to that, where the melody itself was kind of just propelling in a way that it was very difficult to track with. And so it was one of those situations where it's like, how can we just take a snippet of that melody and use that and repeat that with the same lyrics? And so there are definitely ways of simplifying if your melodies are too complex, but you wanna make sure that you are sprinkling in that nice differentiation. So a good principle of songwriting is idea, idea, go somewhere different. Tip number three, dynamic songwriting. When you were writing songs, it's more than just the chords you play, it's more than just the melodies, and it's more than just the lyrics. We actually have to then come up with an arrangement that we're then going to take and play in front of people, right? So we wanna make sure that the songs that we are creating are actually dynamic. Now, when most people think of dynamics, they're thinking volume, right? Loud, soft, 
all that stuff. So when I think of dynamics, I'm thinking about it a little more holistically than just volume. I'm also thinking about it in terms of how many instruments do we have doing what, what are those instruments doing, and how is that actually purposefully pushing the song forward dynamically. So having dynamic arrangement is super helpful. So in this case of the song that we've been doing, the piano part in the, the whole production of this is very basic where it's just these chords with that melody on top. I was once afraid of love. So it's very soft. It's not big. The sparseness is there, but verse two does something different. It's like the, and I'm blanking on the lyrics a little bit, but the instrumental and everything that's happening dynamically is more like this. And then the chorus, which is, but you love me like nobody else could no one could ever take your place and be like you that the first time is just like this very soft but you love me for who i am no one could ever understand me like you do but as the song progresses that has to go somewhere different dynamically to where as the song is building, even if this was just an acoustic arrangement, I would definitely want to be doing things differently where it's more like, but you love me like nobody else can. No one could ever understand me like you do. I apologize. I'm not the greatest singer in the world. I'm more of a musician, songwriter, producer, so... <clears throat> Sorry about that. But I think you get the idea that what we're doing instrumentally, what we're doing in terms of, of yes, of course, volume, but it goes deeper than just volume. It also goes to like, what is the arrangement itself doing? Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, that goes deeper than songwriting, but not really, because even if all you're doing is pitching songs, you have to think this stuff through for sure. You can't just pitch a song like, this is the chorus. Okay. The songs are so much more than just the chords and the melody and the lyrics. It actually is really integrated and tied into the arrangement. So you need to make sure that your arrangement is actually dynamic. It's going somewhere in terms of what is happening, whether that means you're adding a more rhythm, you're adding percussion, you're adding the bass, you're adding guitars or whatever. And even if it's just piano, piano is such an incredibly versatile and dynamic instrument that you can do so much with it. Even acoustic guitar, you can be incredibly dynamic. Maybe you start finger picking and then you add a little more strumming and then you add the pick and you start doing palm muted stuff and you get the idea. So that is the tip, make your songs dynamic dynamically interesting. Tip number four, use themes in your lyrics. I know for me, lyric writing was one of the more difficult things to kind of get good at over the years that I've been writing. At first, I always kind of was like, I'm just not a lyricist. I just kind of do lyrics because my songs, I suppose, have to have lyrics. Well, lyrics are obviously super important. And so using themes is one of the better ways of having really clear cut direction in terms of where you're going. For me personally, when I'm writing music, a lot of times ideas just pop in my head when I don't want them to pop in my head. I'm like driving or I'm making coffee or whatever it is. And I'm not really in a position to just like go into my studio and start recording ideas. So I'll pull out my phone, I'll sing that one part, I'll start adding the do-do-do's and make sure I have enough there that I can figure out what the chord progression is gonna be and go from there. But typically I'll only have one lyrical idea and I have no idea what the song is actually gonna be about unless that lyrical idea has enough information for me to kind of figure it out. So a great example of this was a song called I Will Rise, and I actually demonstrated this song in another video that I did talking about how to mix female vocals if you wanna hear it, and I will be releasing it here on the channel down the road with a music video. But the whole song started out with this one lyric. It was, I'm lost in an ocean of overwhelm. And I knew that I was gonna be writing this for a female singer because I already knew who I was gonna be collaborating with vocally to have sing on this production. So I was writing it for her voice and I wanted it to be this kind of sadder type song. But I had no idea what the song was actually gonna be about. I just kind of like came up with this idea, this lyrical idea with a melody and a chord progression of I'm lost in an ocean of overwhelm. 
And then before I did anything else, I knew that I need to figure out what the song is actually going to be about before I do anything else. Because if you start just writing lyrics willy nilly, sometimes it'll work. And most of the time I end up just kind of writing stuff that kind of seems to fit together. And then I get to a chorus or get later on. I'm like, I don't actually know what this song's about anymore. Crap. And that makes no sense. So with this particular song, I ended up realizing that I wanted to write this song that was about this woman who was in a relationship that was really unhealthy. And the chorus was going to essentially be her rising up and her saying, I'm done. I've had enough. I'm not going to put up with this garbage. I'm stronger than that. I'm better than that. And we ended up creating this incredible song that was about this woman who was rising up, basically saying, I will rise from the ashes. I will stand on my own two feet. Yeah. And it just became this whole, I I was able to write the chorus pretty much right there from understanding, okay, the theme of this song is going to be a woman who is getting out of an abusive or unhealthy relationship and she's saying she's done. Okay, great. Well, now we can actually go ahead and write an entire song about that, right? Because I know what the song is gonna be about. I have the theme. So other examples of themes, you could obviously use love as a broad theme, but that's not really narrowed down enough that you could say, I'm gonna write a song about love. I mean, that's great, but uh, love like good love, like bad love, like are we talking about love as in like, I'm in love and it's happy? Or are we talking about I was in love and it's sad because now this person left me? What kind of love are we talking about, right? So you wanna make sure that you're getting specific enough that the song is going to have a really clear cut direction. You can do other songs about like justice. You could do songs about traveling. You could do songs about any number of things that you can find. There are thousands of examples of themes that you can use lyrically, but the idea here is that you wanna start with a theme and that is going to help guide you lyrically to create your song. Now, of course, that does not mean every single song you ever write has to start with a theme because I would be lying if I said that was the case that I've done, but this is still a really good tool to have in the back of your pocket that if you start with a song, you don't really know what you wanna do, it's a very good idea to first start with, what do I want the theme of this song to be, and then go with that. And finally, number five, keep it simple, stupid. No. No, I'm not calling you stupid. It's just a saying. Let me just start by saying this. I'm kind of a recovering music major. Yeah, I have a degree in music composition. And one of the things that you learn when you are in a university environment, especially as a composer, is you're learning all this really advanced theory. You're learning all this craziness and you're wanting to implement it and you're wanting to just try everything under the sun. And when you're in composition lessons, you're kind of being pushed to advance, right? You're not being told, hey, you should actually make this a little more simple. Like that's the last thing that you're gonna hear in a composition lesson, typically, unless you're getting pop lessons, which let's just face it, colleges kind of act like pop music doesn't exist typically. And so it's really easy when you're learning how to write music or when you're getting into music to want to essentially make things more complex because you want to improve yourself as a musician. But one of the things that I found in my I've been writing for a long time, but in the many, many years that I've been writing, I've actually come to the terms that sometimes simple is definitely better. I look back on a lot of the songs I was writing several years ago or back when I was in college, that's music that no one would listen to because it's just not approachable. Take even someone like Jacob Collier, who writes incredibly complex music, but he does it in a way that still retains a level of simplicity that is actually digestible. That's why he's so popular, because he's writing melodies in particular that are very easy to digest, but he's just infusing that with very complex harmonic structures and in rhythmic structures And of course, he's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea. I wouldn't say he's exactly mainstream, but I think he's an example of someone who is incredibly brilliant, who could make some of the most advanced music we could possibly think of, yet he is still intentionally choosing to have melodies that are quite simple to sing, quite simple to actually listen to. He's just finding other ways of taking things and making them more advanced. So don't think that you have to be writing these songs that go all over the place that are incredibly complex, or don't find yourself in a trap of feeling like, well, I'm only using four chords, that must mean this music's not actually intelligent. And I can just tell you this, like I could probably run circles around most people talking about music theory and I'm a total geek about it, but I'm still writing music that's only using four chords because it turns out that you can still do a whole lot with it. And I found that for me, maturing as a songwriter has actually been more about how can I take something that's simple and elevate it in other ways? 
by making it easy to digest for a listener where this could be mainstream, but it's also going to be in a situation where I'm going to feel happy because I'm finding things that I can do maturely that infuse an element of additional creativity or infuse an element of something that's potentially more advanced. And I tend to do that more through arrangement and production than I do through the straight up songwriting itself. There's so much you can do in modern production today that is actually really quite advanced and very interesting. You can add all this ear candy. So the point here is that when you are writing your songs, you do not need to write songs that are complex. And in fact, you're going to have less likelihood of those songs actually performing well if you are writing songs that tend to be very complex. Let's just take that song again. I was once afraid of love. Come on, that's so simple. And even the chorus is super simple. And you love me like nobody else can. No one could ever understand me like you do. Super, super simple. I mean, we're literally using one, two, three, four. We're using four chords. Those are like the four chords, right? <laughs> but it's really catchy and the lyrics are something that people are gonna be able to resonate with. I would rather write music that people are gonna resonate with and connect with and be able to sing themselves than writing songs that are complex for the sake of making them complex. If that's what you wanna do, that's 100% up to you. You just can't be wondering why it's not gonna be more widely accepted. If you want to take a deeper dive into all of this songwriting, I actually have an entire course on songwriting. It's literally like not expensive, so. I'll have a link in the description down below that you can check out if you're interested. Oh, and make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the like button, leave me a comment. If you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, drop them down below. Love to talk with you guys.